Hello, Dawes Road family, and to those of you who tuned in, welcome in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And once again, we want you to be encouraged in your faith. So in our four-minute Bible booster, we've turned to Jude, and we're in a study in Jude, and so we're into verse 4, actually. Now, verse 3, Jude said, I want to talk about the glorious good news of Jesus. I want to talk about this glorious gospel, how God loves us and gave us His Son, Jesus, so that we could have eternal life. But he says, actually, before I can really do that, I need to defend, I need to fight for the gospel. And of course, he's not talking about physically fighting. He's talking about spiritually fighting for the truth of the glorious gospel. Verse 4 actually tells us why Jude feels so compelled to defend, to defend the truths of the glorious gospel. And in Jude chapter 1, verse 4, it says this, For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago, have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. Now, why do we need, need, why do we need to defend the glorious or the truth of the glorious gospel? Well, it's not because the gospel is weak. It's not it's not that it needs our support to uphold its truthfulness. No, the issue is how it affects and impacts people who need the gospel. I need the gospel. You need the gospel. If we believe the wrong gospel, folks, we cannot be saved. The impact of the gospel will not impact our lives if we're not embracing the true gospel. And Jude is very, very concerned about that. So when he talks about actually defending and contending and fighting for the gospel, it's not a matter of, oh, let's fight for the gospel. No, he's actually fighting for the souls of people. Because if they believe the lie, then they will not be saved. Um, the, stra the, the, the strategy of those folks who are seeking to pervert the truth of the gospel is pretty clear in this verse. Jude says they have a double strategy. These ungodly people, these people who are not true, solid, conscientious worshipers of God, who worship God in God's way, these people have a double strategy. They, number one, pervert the grace of our God into a license in for, uh, for immorality. What they're saying is, Oh, God loves you. God loves everybody. And it doesn't matter how you live. It doesn't matter what your intentions are. It doesn't matter. God will forgive everything and you'll just be swept up into the kingdom of God. Folks, that's a lie. Yes, God does love you. But your sin has caused such an offense that God himself had to pay for your sin. And he did it through the blood of Christ. And it's so that your sins could be forgiven, so that you no longer live in your sin. The second strategy is this. They pervert, they pervert the truth that Jesus Christ is our only sovereign and Lord. Now, that has a number of implications. It could, uh, one, of the one of the tactics they use in that particular strategy of denying who Jesus is, is that they say, well, there's many ways to God. no. There's not many ways to God because there is only one payment that has been made that actually could be paid, and that's through what Christ did for us at the cross. A part of their tactic in establishing this strategy that you don't really need Jesus is that, well, it doesn't really matter. Gee, you can still do your own thing. No, the scripture makes it clear that you submit to Jesus. That's what faith is all about. You're saying you believe God, you trust in God, you commit to God, you commit to Christ. That means that you accept that Jesus is the one and only Lord, the one and only Savior, and you follow Him. That's the invitation. That's the embrace of Christ. Follow Jesus. He is Lord and Savior. So God bless you as you stand for the truth of the glorious gospel. Why does it need to be defended? Because there's people who are sneaking in, even into our churches, who are wanting us to believe a lie. They want to engage in immora immorality, their own selfish agendas, and they don't want to follow Jesus. You follow Jesus. Stand for the grace of God. God bless you as you do indeed follow Jesus.